Hi, welcome. Today I thought I'd take you on a, kind of my little suburban walk here in Tanjambunga so you can get a feel for what it's like, where we're living, and if you were interested in being an expat right here in Malaysia, you might be interested in like how do just regular expats live and where they live. And this happens to be an area where a lot of people from Japan and Korea, the United States and Europe live. So I figured I'd show you that and kind of show you my walk through Tanjambunga, an area, uh, I would call it like a suburb of Georgetown. All right, so I'm gonna see you further on down the road and I'm just gonna show you the highlights and kind of what I see when I go on my daily walks. I always walk down, which is always the easier. I, I'm up on top of a mountain and this particular mountain area has got a walkway. I like to use it pretty safe I mean there's some weird animals from time to time but this is a nice area to just walk up and down in a controlled space and this particular area is connected to um, some of the condos in this area of town and so they've got you know chairs along the walkway and this is going to go all the way down to their security area and they're going to go out into a residential area so I'm just going to kind of take you along this trail that I do next to the mountain. And yes, there is a lot of monkeys in that mountain. There's two different kinds of monkeys. There's these black ones with the white faces that seem to eat fruit. And then there's these brown monkeys that are kind of what I call naughty monkeys. They will, if you leave any trash out, they will get into that trash and they're way worse than a stray dog because they get hands just like humans and they can rubbish through that trash pretty good. So I walk up and down these stairs. It gives me a little bit of exercise, helps me sweat out the hard, stressful week. And it's a good way for me to I want to say stay in shape, but I'm not in that great shape, but this is what I do to at least try to alleviate some of the future damage, I guess. Sometimes I see monkeys just sitting right over here as I go down. It's, it looks really steep, but it's actually not nearly as bad as it looks. There's groundskeepers, they're always in this area, keeping everything tidy. There's some decorations. At night, this has a different feel to it. And this area of town, I kind of have nicknamed Jurassic World. Kind of has a out of this world feel to it. It's, you know, really easy walking down, going back up. I'm gonna, I guess, be a little bit out of breath, but I'll try to take some breaks along the way. That's a good way to keep your calves in shape, I'll tell you that. I haven't been hiking, and you know, I used to do a lot of hiking. Some areas of New Mexico, a little bit in Oregon, but didn't really have time. But over here, I'm quite busy, but if I wanted to go hiking, this will keep my hiking legs in shape for if and when the time comes. But it's an interesting little area of town. You get to see the differences of the, I don't know, infrastructure, how people work, maintain, you know, water tanks, and it's a little different. You know, it's a little more out in the open, I guess. We're gonna walk down to a park. Sometimes these drivers drive a little crazy, so good to uh, 
keep your eyes open, that's for sure. That's a fire hydrant, totally different than what you see in the US. This is kind of what the houses look like over here. These are pretty large size homes. So this is the area of town. A lot of foreign expats live here from mainland China, Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea. Um, there's some Europeans here. I think they're, I've seen some, I've definitely seen French and German. I believe some Ukrainians, some Russians, and other Eastern European countries that I honestly can't figure out yet. I mean, there is, there's, there's Americans, but not nearly as many Americans as the rest of the world. I think I've seen more people from Europe over here than Americans. There's a lot of Western food over there, so it's definitely catering to a combination of folks. And if you look at the menu, there's a strong Korean influence in this area of town. So there must be a lot of South Koreans. I know I see them at the pool, so. So this is a nice area, it's pretty well groomed. Sometimes I have to be careful because the monkeys like the exact same areas that I do and it can get a little aggressive. If you look closely at that condo in front of us there, it's kind of a really big one. They built everything on top of a car park, which is nice. Still under construction, but looks like it's doing really well. That's the park. I know there's monkeys over there sometimes. Looks like somebody has a garden over here. That's nice. Pretty good sized garden. So we're gonna go down here. There's some businesses over here. I think I call that Happy Panda. They love food delivery. So they got a little there's an old TV show in the U.S. called Cheers. They've kind of taken that logo, I guess. That's a Cotony sweet story. It's Korean. There's this, uh, what's it called? Jews or something, Jews? Java. That's kind of a, oh, it's Javu. It's an Asian like uh, store, and they got the, the drop offs, some packages, some soap store, probably shampoo. And then Let's Meet, which is pretty popular around here. So, that's definitely an American style. And there's a nice food court right there. You've probably seen some of this in some of my other videos. I've shown you the food at the food court, etc. My black pepper chicken. I'm very sorry, sir. The black pepper chicken is finished for me. Oh, you said black pepper chicken sour sauce. So you can see, you got egg, rice, the chicken with some sauce on it. Every area of the world has its own unique foliage, trees, different things. Over here on this corner. There's a lot of Chinese food over there. And if you see a sign that says grab food on any restaurant, there's an app that provides a service. And basically it's connected to man, a large army of scooters and they deliver everything from grab. It's amazing what they can do. Um, and when you pay for like an, a monthly fee for the grab service, you even get discounts off of your delivery. So I use that quite often. It's just so easy for me to, you know, after a hard day's work, you just click on grab something you've already had before and within 10 seconds, it's in the queue. By the time you get home, it's waiting for you. You just grab it and walk upstairs. It's nice, pretty convenient. normal neighborhood. I'd call this like a 
middle class neighborhood. Everybody's pretty friendly. Or they have been so far, but I suppose there's exceptions to that rule. So, what kind of tree is that? I don't know, but. If you know what the name of that tree is, let me know in the comments below. But look at how deep. That's for rainwater. I mean, we get some serious rainstorms here. There's some other condos up there. So this is just a small neighborhood, but you know, pet daycare and boarding. Huh. Okay. There's a little market, another cafe, up the other side of that food court. It's another smaller condo over there. Ooh, feeling the heat now. And it's hot, I'm not gonna lie. It's much cooler than Singapore, I think, in my opinion, but it's still really hot. This is definitely a multi-ethnic neighborhood. Malays from Chinese or Indian heritage, Malay heritage, which is very diverse in its own right. And then uh, all the different expats from around the world. Definitely makes for an interesting area of town. And there you go, there was one expat on that scooter you just saw. See another person with delivery. These scooter guys, man, they're like serious. You have to be careful. You don't want to get ran over. Okay, so I'm back at the staircase. Getting ready to kind of, as you see, head up. Already getting tired. Boy, I'm hot now. So I'm almost done with this uh, urban hike here. I'm just looking around. As you can see, I got a little hot, taking a break. Make sure that when you look at this video, I want you to look down below. I got some links down there. And one of them is our newsletter. And so every time we do a blog post or we upload a video, say to our YouTube vlog, we usually put a post over to there so you'll get notified. Um, there's a delay, but within several days, you know, you're going to get notified of everything. Same thing goes with the podcast. If I put something new on the podcast, uh, whether it's uh, one of our old archive shows or one of our newer shows or our free podcast audiobooks, it's going to be in that newsletter. So make sure you subscribe down below. And if you want to support us uh, financially, we'd appreciate it. Buy us a coffee, coffee.com and that link down there as well. If you use the subscribe function to like $1 or $4 a month, you're going to get additional content and that'll be available to everybody who's a subscriber. So, okay, I'm going to fast forward, show you this in kind of super fast mode. Um, it takes me about 30 minutes round trip, but this is a great way to work up a good sweat and to uh, stay healthy and exercise and see the world. Show you down below here. Okay, so tonight we're gonna have the Imperial Indonesian Cuisine. Wow, that's a 
volcano of flavor. Very specialized. And 